This is GabNet, the great American broadcast network. Talk like you've never heard it before. Hey, guess who this is? Yeah, this is Alex. This is Alex Bennett. And uh, we're here until uh, midnight tonight, Eastern Daylight Time. Uh, about uh, 25 minutes from now, we're going to go to our citizens panel, talk to a bunch of people. you find out what that's all about. It's kind of talk radio, like as we say, you've never heard it before. But in the meantime, in between time, you know, we do have guests here from time to time, and uh, we usually start our show off with one. Ladies and gentlemen, with us, of course, the inimitable Larry Bubbles Brown. Hello, Larry. Hello, Alex. How are you? Good, man. Hanging in there. I love to say, hello, Larry. Just uh, <laughs> Remember that? <laughs> that was uh, McLean Stevenson. Yes, one of the worst television shows in history, and I think it lasted like, what, 13 episodes and that was it if that i think uh i think he may have made there's people have made really bad decisions i think he left mash well that that's that, that was the big thing he he was on mash with this is for people again you know sometimes you and i talk about stuff and we have to remember we got to bring the audience into it because they weren't even alive then our ancient references yeah. our ancient references uh, uh, McLean Stevenson was an actor who was famous for being on MASH. He played uh, the, uh, Colonel, the um, Colonel whatever, Lipschitz or whatever. And it, it, that, of course, was one of the biggest shows on television. And at the height of it, he decides to leave. And he leaves and goes over and starts a show called Hello, Larry. He thinks, hey, you know, <laughs> I, I was a big deal. You know, then I can be a big deal with my own show. And Hello, Larry is the worst show ever, and it lasts 13 weeks, and it's off the air. And that's about the last we ever really truthfully heard of McLean Stevenson, except on game shows. I occasionally see him on, uh, I watch this game show channel. Like he's, uh, he popped up at the 78 on Match Game. Yeah, yeah. So th that's what happened to McLean Stevenson's career. You know, and, and not that the, uh, MASH lasted that much longer after he left. It was about another couple of seasons. But still, another couple of seasons of residuals uh, would have made him more of a millionaire than he already was. You know, so. What yeah, I'm trying to think. Uh, think about other people made horrible decisions like that. Wasn't it uh, Shelley Long left Cheers? Shelley Long left Cheers. Um, I'm trying to think of, of things that people turned down. I've, I've heard about those. But I can't remember one offhand right now. But they turned down major roles. Uh, Tom Selleck, okay, was supposed to be Indiana Jones. Really? Yes. Wow. And uh, they couldn't get him because CBS, who had him under contract for Magnum P.I., would not allow him to do uh, a movie. Okay? So he had to turn down the role. And they gave it to Harrison Ford. Now, can you imagine that part and would it have been a success with McLean with uh, with Tom Selleck that'd always be interesting to see how it would have turned out well to begin with the acting would have been worse but <laughs> well, well Ford's kind of bland though isn't he well Ford's not a great actor but here's what Ford is he's a great movie actor okay and the difference being that a great actor does great performances, plays different characters. Meryl Streep is a great actress. She never plays Meryl Streep. She always plays somebody with a cobbled-together accent, all right? Uh, but in the case of, uh, of, of, of a movie actor, uh, Cary Grant's a good example of a movie actor. They have a great persona, and you go to see the movies to see that persona. Mm -hmm. And I don't think Cary Grant ever, you know, put in... I mean, he probably put in a great acting job acting as Cary Grant, but he never played characters. Yeah, it was always the same guy. It was you, and you went to see him, you know, another great movie actor, John Wayne. You went to see the persona. You didn't go to see the actor. Right. And, and so uh, in that respect, Harrison Ford is a traditional movie actor. And I think it's pretty, actually, in many ways, pretty terrific. Uh, 
you know, and he's survived that way. And so when you go, you expect Harrison Ford. You don't expect Harrison Ford dressed up as a hunchback or something, you know? <laughs> right. So, uh, uh, but I'm in, trying to think uh, who else uh, didn't, uh, you know this because you know movies. So oh, well, let, me, uh, let, me, let me just. Martin Sheen in yeah. Apocalypse Now was not the first choice. It was, uh, wasn't it Harvey Keitel? I think maybe it was, yes. It, it, obviously, it would be because Keitel was such a great actor, you know. But. Uh, the point is that in the case of, uh, I was thinking again, in the case of, of Tom Selleck, I don't think he had quite the movie actor persona that Harrison Ford had. So, There's TV it, actors and movie actors. And, and in those days, they never were able to go back and forth. You know, if you were. Yeah, it used to be like uh, uh, film actors really looked down on TV. It was kind of a real step down to do TV. And. Now, now they're all doing it. Now they're all doing it. Well, the, what they've got is they've got things like Netflix and HBO, and so they can get paid a lot of money for doing something that, you know, uh, is over with in a short amount of time. So uh, that's attractive. It's not considered day classe. But, you know, here, here's think about people who were famous who went and took TV shows on that you wouldn't have thought did it. Um James Stewart had a TV show. Did you know that? No, I did not. Yeah, the James Stewart show. In fact, I had a trivia question once, and the trivia question was, name Academy Award winners that had TV shows. That's a great question. It is a great question. There was something like at that time, there were 13 of them or something like that, and and, and we would sit around. We played this on my show one time. We tried to figure uh, them all out. <laughs> uh, Jackie Gleason didn't win an Oscar, did he? No, Jackie Gleason didn't win an Oscar. But I'll tell you another one. Um, uh, uh, this this one really will amaze people. Broderick Crawford. Oh, for uh, he played uh, he, Huey Long. Huey Long in All the King's Men. Funny you should mention that because... Uh, I think I was talking to Durst earlier, and he mentioned Huey Long, and I mentioned, uh, well, it was a great movie. Uh, but uh, uh, you, he played Huey Long and All the King's Men, and then his next big job was he went on to play... Highway Patrol. Highway Patrol. And uh, uh, after that, uh, nobody even wanted him for movies anymore. Okay, here's, here's another one. Ernest Borgnine. Um, for Marty, 1955. What? See, remember those dates. 1955. All the King's Men, 1949. Uh, no, no. Uh, Ernest Borton, I was Marty. And then he went to do McHale's Navy for TV. Right. So there's another Academy Award winner that went back and forth. Uh, James Stewart, I think, was another one. I, I can't remember if he won an Academy Award. Uh, well, I never knew he had a TV show, so. Oh, I yeah, he had the James Stewart show. Yeah. Um, and uh, I, I, I can't sit here and name them all now. And today it's easier to say that, to name that. Because a lot of people... Did Ellen Burstyn win an Oscar? Huh? Ellen Burstyn had a show, but I don't know if she had an Oscar. I don't know, to tell you the truth. But anyway, all I'm saying is, is that in those days it was very rare. That's why it was such a great trivia question. Yeah. Uh, but today, uh, hell, they all do TV shows. They're all doing it, yeah. You know. There's a woman, last year, there was a woman who was nominated for an Academy Award for Best Actress. Her name was Ruth Nega. She's a very good actress. She was in this film, and it was called Loving, and it was about uh, an interracial couple trying to get married in, like, Georgia, and they couldn't because it was against the law. Okay? And... Uh, she got nominated for an Academy Award for Best Actress. She's on a show on TV called Preacher. She's one of the stars <laughs> of the show. She was last year. She came back this year, which I hold, you know, I hand it to her because she she was nominated for an Academy Award after all, mm-hmm. you know, and yet she was willing to go back and continue the role that she really liked doing. But today, that's not you know, she'll still be able to get movie roles based on the Oscar nomination. So it's not like a horrible thing that you do TV any longer. Yeah. But boy. It sure not a step was, down. It sure was back then, boy. Yeah. I'm telling you. You, uh, you know, you uh, had to uh, hustle 
If you if you went and did a movie, they said, ah, well, it's because uh, TV. It's because your movie career is over with. Um, but anyway, you know, last time we were talking, Larry, I was talking about this this ability you have, like of throwing dates out. When I said Marty, you said. 1955. You're probably right. Admit, wasn't it 56? I don't know. It was probably. It was probably. You can look it up. It was probably. It was probably. He probably got the award because they give the 55 awards in 56. But yeah, it was the yeah. best movie of 55. Yeah. 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 So uh, and, and yes, folks, Ernest Borgnine, that ugly guy you used to see uh, on TV, uh, in McHale's Navy and places like that. Although a lot of my audience may have not even seen him. They may not be alive from McHale's Navy, but they can see it on Nick at Night. You know things like that. He won an Academy Award. Broderick Crawford, 10-4 uh, on the Highway <laughs> Patrol, which I don't think you can see anywhere. I don't think they run Highway Patrol anymore. No, but, you know, I can tell you and, something and, about Broderick oh, Crawford. By the way, it, about, uh, wait, wait a minute. Wait, wait, let me finish something here. It wasn't only uh, a, a TV show. It was worse than that. It was a syndicated TV show. It wasn't on a network. But anyway, what were you going to say? Broderick Crawford, I read, was uh, he was one of the few actors. He had a photographic memory. He could look at a page of dialogue and remember it like that. Oh, really? Which is, uh, I cannot remember three lines. I is isn't that how, uh, amazing with it, with the. I've never been able to remember my my act is short. I can't remember all my entire act. I've never been able. R- really? Yeah. So you it's just been go. A huge, you, you just huge go. Problem forever. So what do you do? You go out and you just start at point A until you get to the last. Try word? to get there, but I always leave stuff out. I mean, every time before I go on stage, I'm looking at notes and just uh, it's horrible. That's really something because you would think that with your Rain Man like quality <laughs> of being able, like if I say to you, uh, we've done this before, but let me just say, uh, June seventh, nineteen fifty six. What day of the week was it? June 756 was a Thursday. See? Now, where does that come from, folks? Well, where? first of all, maybe we should check it to see them right. <laughs> yeah, you, we could be believing you. This is like the guy who you think adds perfectly, so he always adds up the, <laughs> the check at the end of a meal, but you know he's probably been airing in his behalf all these years. Mm-hmm. You know, but uh, do, you, do you think you're right? I think I'm right. Well, wait a minute. Hold on a second. I think I can just type in the date. What did we say? June 7th? 756. Okay, IP wait a minute. Thursday. June 7th, 1956. Okay, let's see here. Uh, June 7th, 1956. Um, does it say? Uh, what day was my birthday? Thir- it was a Thursday. You said Thursday, right? Yeah. yeah. See, folks? See what I'm saying? I don't know where I that know. comes from. I can tell you how I did that. How you do- Okay. T- tell me the method upon which you did it. I can, it was ni- I, I can remember 1984. Uh, the 4th of July was a, a Wednesday. Uh-huh. And that I calculated back to June, and uh, the calendar repeats every twenty-eight years. So 20, eighty-four is the same as fifty-six. Wow! Wow! So you only have to you only have to memorize twenty years, right? Oh, pretty. Much, I can remember like I remember like growing up. I can remember from nineteen sixty to about nineteen ninety-five, and then my short-term memory went dead after ninety-five. So. Between 60 and 95, I can remember most dates, and then I can, if there's something happened in 1940, I'll just remember what happened in 1968. Okay, now it says here, next year, June 7th will be on a Thursday. Okay, so that's, uh, I can't go forward. Now, I don't know if I am, uh, uh, if I, uh, like... Let me see here. Let me go here. December 18th, when I was born. Okay, my birthday was December 18th. Oh, I hate to say this. 1939. Wow. Okay, so what day of the week was that? That was a Monday. You're absolutely... Okay, let's see here. It, it was a Monday. 
You're okay. absolutely right. I was born on a Monday. And I did that by looking at 1967. I mean, is this not amazing, folks? I mean, don't you find this just incredible? I remember, now, yeah, I remember now, uh, now, the December 15th, 1967 was a Friday, so 1670, 18th a Monday. So. so so why, where does this come from? And why do people have, you were mentioning somebody who knew what? Uh, it, it, the last time we were doing the interview. You the were, real Rain Man, yeah. the guy the movie was based on, he knew a, a, a number of things, but he... You could, he could name every zip code in America. He'd give him the town, he'd name the zip code. That's and hard. Then, is, that may be harder than what you're doing because you have a methodical... Oh, much harder, yeah. That's, uh, do you have a metho- he, he, you have a methodical... He's a human computer. I'm just remembering certain dates. I can remember you know, something on or near so I can kind of calculate. But well, you have a methodical... The real Rain Man yeah. was just unbelievable. But you have a methodical way of coming up with it. Yeah. You know. Uh, and I like the I like the way the calendar. Re- it's always the same every twenty eight years. It, it, your it, your birthday would have been the same in sixty seven. It would have been the same in uh, uh, ninety five. And when is it going to be the same again? Uh, twenty 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 three. Twenty twenty three. Well, let's hope I live that long. I can ha- celebrate my birthday on another Monday. <laughs> But still, you have to you have to have memorized, or at least in your mind, twenty years. Yeah, a little more than that, actually. But yeah. uh, when I was, I do know when I was a kid, like growing up, I used to love baseball. I can't stand it now. Yeah. But in 1965, when I lived in Cincinnati and loved the Reds, uh, at the end of the year, 162 games, I could have given you the score for every game. I could have given you great uh, detailed information about every game. Now I can't. Uh, I can't do that at all. Wow, wow. Well, that's because you were interested in. It. Yeah, I can still remember. I can still name every World Series winner since 1919. I mean, there were certain things that I kind of memorized and knew. I can't tell you anymore because it's been many years since I've had to use it. But when I used to be a disc jockey playing records, uh, I could tell you a specific album. And if you asked me for, you know, what track was a certain song I could tell you because I had That's all the good. I had all yeah. the albums memorized and it was it, it, it occasionally I will come upon some area of knowledge that I have that I never knew I had I don't know if you've ever had that happen but I one time I was interviewing a guy about the old west you know wrote a book about the old west encyclopedia of the old west and we started talking about bandits and things like that and i suddenly was coming up with all these people and said well what about so-and-so and so-and-so and this cowboy here and that cowboy there and you know dead eye dick and whatever and i'm suddenly saying to myself where did i accumulate this knowledge <laughs> dead eye. you know i this was knowledge that i had accumulated and i didn't know where i got it from but i think it was that every time i heard some fact about the old west I just held on to it subconsciously. But you must have loved that uh, genre. I, I, yeah, I love the I love the old West. You know, mainly because it isn't now. There was no Trump back in the old West. <laughs> you know, there was there was no Amy Schumer back in the old West. Uh, <laughs> there was no Chuck Schumer. <laughs> I, I love to use her as a perfect example of. Uh, what people find funny today, you know. I mean, I, I you, know, you you say your career is having, you know, is is has been is not been, been as, on life support for years. It's yeah. been on life support for the last couple of years, and I was talking to Bobby Slayton, who's a road warrior of the first order, and works all the time. He says it's getting harder for him because all they want are these young comics. And I got to tell you, yeah, if you're you, over fifty, it's very hard to get club work. So you know, I'm tr- I, I'm trying to think about, you know, um, were you guys as funny as some of the older comics? And I, I liked you guys, so they're liking like an Amy Schumer or who are some of the other big ones today? Uh, Kevin and, Hart. And I watch. I mean, I, uh, Kevin Hart's likable, but he's not that funny. And when I see Amy Schumer, I scratch my head. You know, 
And I, I just wonder if it's just I'm an old fart, you know. I mean, mm-hmm. I find you incredibly funny. I find Slayton one of the funniest men in America. I find Durst, uh, 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 for, in political comedy, to be one of the most astute and best comics in that field. Uh, and there are a lot of people we could name who are really great comics. Uh, I saw Dom Herrera on this show called uh, I'm Dying Up Here. And he's gained a bit of weight. And he's just yeah. playing a small little part there. And I'm thinking... Dom Herrera is maybe one of the funniest men I have ever had on a radio program. The first, uh, first thing I heard when I got in a stand-up, the funniest guy in America is Dom Herrera. Yeah. W- w- what happened? Dom can't, probably can't get the clubs today. No. You know? So I, I just, you know, I, I, I guess I'm, I'm an old fart or something, but I, I, I like the old comics. You know, and I think that the, uh, who are they giving all these Netflix specials to? The young comics. I mean, even I think even Lewis Black is having a hard time getting a gig. You know, and yeah, you don't hear much about him anymore. Right. I mean, it, it's just been been eclipsed by all these uh, these new comics. But uh, getting away from comedy and back to your little speciality, uh, <laughs> uh, you know, I find it amazing that people can do that. You know, and I, uh, I should have. I was. I did my life history, uh, and I told the whole story of my life. And at certain points, I got stuck on what happened first. You know, did this happen before that happened? Uh, when? What year did this happen? As opposed to when that happened? And I never thought to call you, because you could probably tell me at least everything within a certain part of my life. I could have helped out a little, yeah. You know, you could have told me when when a certain event happened or didn't happen, you know? Mm-hmm. And, and, uh, uh, and, and that's what I find amazing. You're an amazing resource that way. Like, when did I start? See, I had a problem, believe it or not. When I started at KMEL, and then when I went to, uh, uh, what do you call it? Uh, uh, Quake. The, the Quake, and then when I went to Live 105. Mm-hmm. I had completely forgotten, and I had to look it up and everything, that I, between Camel or KMEL, or excuse me, between the quake and Live 105, there was a seventh-month period I wasn't on the air. Right. That was uh, summer of 85. See, if I had asked you, you would have told me. And when did and I go? You came. you came to Live 105 in February of 86. See? See? And I can pl- when I say I lasted so many years in San Francisco, I forgot I didn't work for seven months, and a lot of it had. To yeah, do- I remember that. And you—that's uh, when the comedy scene was just raging. But you did keep a, you had somebody, you had a phone number you could call, and you gave updates and reviews. So you kind of stayed in touch with your fans that way. Yeah, but then I went ba- back on the air, and we were more successful, I think, at Live 105 than we ever were at the Quake, and uh, but. I forgot that there was a seven-month period that I wasn't on the air. I, in fact, if you had asked me, if you'd said to me, well, you know, you weren't on the air for a couple of months there, I couldn't tell you how many months it was. But you could have told me. Yeah, I remember, well, not exactly the number of months, but I do remember the summer of 85 till uh, February of 86. And, this is almost and we were all clo- so happy when you came back. This is almost close to you being a stalker. <laughs> <laughs> Although I know you're not. You know. And uh, yes, I, I can. Uh, February of '86. I remember uh, Valentine's Day. We did. Uh, you weren't on this, but I remember doing a show with Ellen DeGeneres and Warren Thomas down at the uh, Stone in uh, Palo Alto. This is when uh, when Ellen was still knocking out clubs like crazy. Right. Yeah. 1986. And uh, yeah. And she had won on a. She had been on Showtime and won the Funniest Person in America award. She had just won that, and she did the year before she finished second in the comedy competition to Sinbad. <laughs> wow. Well, who came in third? Uh, Let's see. That was eighty-five. I think uh, eighty-five. With Kravitz and Pearl were in that. Oh, really? Yeah. Okay. It's, where's Sinbad these days? He's still working. I guess he does these two-hour shows, and he, he does have a following. I think he's making pretty good money. Yeah, yeah. Um, boy, it, 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 it's kind of interesting. It's not kind of interesting. It is interesting. But uh, um, 
you know, Ellen was, uh, I hired Ellen for one of my cavalcades of comedy. You know, she, for many yeah. years, she was wandering around, and finally she got that TV show, and then she lost it because she came out. Mm-hmm. You know. Now she's rich well, you, you know, God. You know, it was very strange. I used to say something back in the day, and I don't know if you remember me saying it. And I, I, I think I even said this on the air. I think I kind of outed her by doing it. I said, if Ellen DeGeneres would come out as gay, I said, that would be the greatest forward movement in gay rights that you can imagine. Mm-hmm. I said, because she's so likable and so liked on television, this is when she had the TV show, that she could do it and have people say, she's gay? Boy, I like her. You know? <laughs> and sure enough, one day she came out and said she was gay. And I remember going on the air and saying, ladies and gentlemen, Ellen DeGeneres is a hero, you know, uh, because she came out and she didn't have to. You know, there was nothing forcing her to except her own particular, you know, feeling of, of what's right and what's wrong. I said, that was absolutely amazing. Just absolutely amazing. You know, I just looked at the clock. Would you believe 25 minutes have gone and passed and we're now into overtime? Wow. Yeah. Let me... You know, that's... I know the few times I'm having, like, a really great set, that's when you re- you lose track of time. You're not even paying attention yeah. to the time. No, I, last time I looked, it was something like 15 minutes, and now it's 20, wow. going on 26 minutes. Hey, always good talking to you, Larry, and I know we're going to Yeah, that was, that was the most fun I've had so far. This is great. Thanks. I know we're going to do this in another week, so uh, I hopefully, unless you don't want to. Uh, and then unless, unless our hernia strangulate or... Yeah, something like that. Anyway, thanks a lot, Larry. (laughs) Okay. (laughs) Ladies and gentlemen, the immortal Larry Bubbles Brown. This is GabNet, the great American broadcast network. Talk like you've never heard it before. Anyway, welcome back. It is the Alex Bennett program. It goes from now until midnight, and... uh, uh, the reason I'm kind of starting this over again is we had a problem with our stream going out, and I don't know if the whole thing got recorded. So what I'm going to do is start the show right now and say to everybody hello, and if you didn't hear the interview with Larry Bubbles Brown, yeah, it's too bad. Uh, but I don't know. Who knows? I may fix it after the show's over, and it, it, it'll be okay, and it'll run, and it will we'll do fine. On the other hand... We just might not. Anyway, I'm going to open up the Skype lines here. I don't know. There's nobody listening out there tonight. It's really dead tonight. I don't know what the problem is. Uh, It's as though uh, nobody nobody wants this show anymore. Uh, And if you don't want it, I'm I'm tired of doing it anyway. So you know. No, but I'm looking, and the number of people watching the video. Oh, wait a minute. Hold on a second. If they want to see the video, they probably would like to see me, too. Uh, uh, let's see if those numbers start jumping up now that we're into the show. And uh, people can call me and talk to me. And if they don't want to, uh, I'll just call the whole thing off. I, you know, I, I'm, there are times when I say to myself, uh, is all this worth it, you know, what I'm doing here? Uh, why do I keep doing it? And in the last week or so, life, uh, things have been very, very slow. Look at this. I know the video's going out. Nobody's watching it. Oh, it's terrible. It's terrible. And the audio? Uh, uh, some people are starting to listen to it now. So I don't know. I don't know what the deal is tonight. Um, love, the, love the show number now. What we did. Hello, Norm. Some people are saying things on the on the writing here that doesn't doesn't make very much sense, and of course now we're waiting also for people to call us. Uh, uh, that would be nice if that uh, if that happened, uh, and we could uh, we could actually uh, talk to people who call us. By the way, there's several ways to call us. One is using Skype. If you don't have Skype, go get it at Skype.com. Very easy to put it on your computer and then to sign up for it. Doesn't cost you a penny doesn't cost you a penny to call us. I don't know how those people make a living, but what the hell? Let them, 
let them earn a living in whatever way they can. Anyway, uh, oh, well, uh, Mike is calling. We can always count on Mike to call, right? Mike, wait until his uh, picture. Wait until your picture comes up. What happened with you and uh, Damien? You like uh, punked out on him. What happened was I got a phone call and I had to go to the bathroom at the same time. Well, you didn't. You, the guy's only I, got a 25 minute program for crying out loud. Okay, I could not hold it. I could not hold it. Really? I'm sorry. You no, know, I was that bad. I had a little bit of a issue of diarrhea today. Uh, well, you didn't have to put it that way. Yeah, on top of that, the phone rang, so I grabbed the phone, sat and talked to my brother for a half an hour. Oh, okay. Three minutes. Yeah, well. From family business. Yeah. Anyway, so uh, so it's just you and me. I guess nobody else is going to call tonight? I guess this is it, huh? Who knows? It might, it's still early, isn't it? If, if all I have to do tonight is all I have is Mike, I'm going to blow my brains out, okay? <laughs> there, there he goes. He's going to the bathroom again. Oh, uh, uh, oh no! I, what's that? It's a baseball bat. Yep. You know what the, the uh, who used a baseball bat after dinner? Alfonso Cabone. Yeah. He got yeah. made a sign of the cross, and he turned around and beat the hell out of him. Well, that's uh, that, that that's one way to get their attention. True. Yeah. You know. Uh, here comes here comes Phil. Okay. Oh wait a minute. Oh, damn it, Phil. Call right back, will you? I, sure. I screwed up. I'm I'm screwing up tonight. Uh, wait a minute. Hold on a second. Let me let me. Oh boy, Mike, are you there? No, Mike isn't there. Okay, here comes Mike again. And I I screwed up in the way that I would say. Uh, uh, putting Phil on. Uh, so here comes Phil, and now I'll put him on the right way. There we go. Hello, Phil. How are yeah. you? Yeah. I'm sorry, Phil. I did that. I, I've been screwing. I, I'm Everything's screwing up tonight on me. I'm having problems myself. What do you mean? Uh, well, I decided the to... Republican, the Republican I, Party threw you out? No. Yeah. No, no, yeah. Uh, I decided to recalibrate my monitor, and it told me there was an update for my color monkey. So I I uploaded the update. Wait, 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 wait. What, what, what is what, what what is color monkey? Oh, it's a color spectrometer, uh, and you put it. Uh, there's some software, and you put it on your monitor, and it uh, uh, you calibrates. Mean, you mean the on your uh, on your basically your your uh, computer monitor? Correct. <laughs> Why do you and need to calibrate it? For photography. Uh, so that uh, what I am seeing is actually what is there because, you know, when you go into do a photo and you're going to work on it, you, you need to calibrate your monitor. Oh, okay. So it's, it's called a color spectrometer, and every, every photographer uh, that, uh, that has a monitor that does digital photography yeah. uh, should or does calibrate their monitor. Oh, okay. uh, this is an IPS monitor, which is uh, a, a monitor that's specifically made for photography. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. And, and, and so what, what does it do? Does it give you then the p perfect color? Yes, and then I can also work with a color checker. Uh, so if I take a photograph of a uh, this chart that has different colors in it, uh, there's software which allows me then to change those colors in the photograph based mm -hmm. on the color checker. Boy, this is uh, this is really boring. Well, hey, it's five hundred dollars. <laughs> yeah. It's still yeah. really boring. It, they, yeah. it, they soak you 500 bucks so you can be, make sure your color was just right on your monitor. That's right. And it also will calibrate my printer, and it will now, also calibrate my You know what it won't calibrate? Projector. You know what it won't calibrate? If you send me that picture and I look at it on my monitor. Uh, actually, I can send you a profile and uh, so that you can look at it with, uh, with the color profile that I send you. <sighs> Don't bother. I won't. Don't bother. <laughs> Chances are you, you've got a $99 Dell monitor, and it wouldn't make a damn bit of difference. Uh, actually, I do have a Dell monitor that I'm doing this show with right now, but the other one is a $1,000 Apple uh, monitor. 
well, I have a thousand dollar Dell monitor. Yeah. Whoopie do. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. Oh, I, Who gets a rat's ass? My yeah. book's well, bigger than yours. Yeah. <laughs> there's a. Hey, there's you a. You don't have a monitor, right? There's. A, I do. No, you just watch it on your TV. Right? I'm not watching it on no TV. What the hell are you talking about, you asshole? <laughs> you were a real piece of work. Yeah. <laughs> Anyway, hello to, uh, let's see, we've been joined by Rob and we've been joined by Jeff. Jeff, there's a light hello. in back of you, and so it's all we see is you in darkness, kind of. I know, I'm in the dark land. He's not calibrated, but soon he will be. See, if you move your, your camera just a little bit, you'd get that light out of there, and then more light would get on your face. See, when you do that, see what happens? Yeah. How's that better? There, oh, that's fine. That's good. That's good. Yeah. That's terrific. Uh, what's new, uh, Rob? Uh, the house coming along? Yeah, we had our pre-drywall meeting. Uh, it looks like we're we're going to be around Feb uh, September 16th for our closing. Mm -hmm. So we'll be in pretty much like I expected, the end of September. We'll take possession on a couple of weeks to get it painted and such, and we'll be in by the end of the month. Yeah. Uh -huh. Now, I let me ask you a question. I'm sure it's exciting. But oh yeah! What goes on at a drywall meeting? Pre-drywall. Pre-dry. Oh, this isn't just a drywall meeting. This is the before pre the. You, you, they take you through the house, and everything is studded. Right, all the walls are studded out. Yeah. All the plumbing is in, so you can see where the toilets and the showers are going to be, and all the yeah. in-wall plumbing and all the, the power outlets. And then the guy from the the uh, I met with the guy from the internet, uh, not internet, but the wiring company, who's putting in all of the HDMI cables and all of the the network drops. And we go into each room and decide where everything is going to be. And then once that's done, the walls are, you know, once I've approved all that, now they can seal the walls. Now they'll do the sheetrock and, and, and all that. So it's, it's a, it's, it takes about an hour. Go through the house and uh, a couple of times with two different yeah. people. Has anybody else here gone through that process of, like, building a house and having to go through that? I, I watched paint dry for a while. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it, it, it's got to be. That figure, Bill. It, no, it's actually look. You're you're building a house, so it's actually really exciting to do. You you, uh, you get a chance to watch it go up. You get a chance to have a say in how it goes up. Uh, you get a chance to take pictures of the, of everything behind the walls, so that if you need to do something or if you see a leak or something, I can go back to those pictures and say, well, the pipe for such and such is there, and that's probably the problem. Or if I want to drill into a wall, I, I know what's behind it. Yeah. Wow. So. Uh, yeah, I mean, no, it's, it's got to no, it's got to be exciting. I mean, it, it, now the the house you're in, you were in, you didn't build, yeah. right? That I was, did. Oh, Bill, this did? is the second house I'm building. Oh, really? So you've been through yeah. this process before? Yes. That's second kinda, time. It's kind of a cool process. You know? It is. It's it's uh, if I thought it was more. It's fascinating to watch a house go up. It's fascinating to to be the one because up until I'm mean, I'm 60 years old. Well, I was. 54 maybe mm -hmm. up until my first 54 years and like everybody else obviously on this panel today you've moved into a house and you lived in a house that you had no the rule the walls are the walls the power is the power i determine where i'm putting ceiling fans i determine where i'm putting you know yeah mm -hmm. all you know, in my garage where I want power outlets, where I want, uh, you know, all the things that do, we're do, doing. Do they, if you, uh, however, you're not a professional home builder, right? So, not at all. But so, you've got, just, so do these guys ever say to you, you know, I know you want that there, but it, it believe me, that's not going to work. Do they ever well, say you that can't, to you? Well, you, you can't, you're only talking about creature comfort things. I can't have them put a wall where I don't want it, where I want to a wall all i'm doing is and it's hard to do because one of the big things that you you struggle with is yeah they ask you all these questions up front now you've never lived in the house you've only been to the model up until this point you're at you're you're being asked all these questions and you're asked to make decisions about where you want things and yeah. yet you've never been in this location so if it after i moved into my last house there were like things that I went, Shh, gee, you know, I really should have had them do this here because now I'm living in the damn space and I see how I want to use it. So you're you're moving into a space that you've never or you're thinking about what you want to do in a space that you've only seen the model. 
Yeah. And in a lot of cases, in my case, they had a model for the house that I'm building. In a lot of cases, it's you haven't seen the house really. or it, it, Maybe you've gotten into someone else's if they've paid somebody to say, hey, can we come in and see, show these buyers your house so they can see what they're looking to buy. Yeah. And, and so you're determining where you want certain things. And then, you, you know, it was like when they asked me, where do you want your, because I had in my last house, I had them put in home theater, right? So yeah. the speakers on the two speakers in the front and the, and the center channel speaker, the speakers on the sides and the back, where do you want that? Well, shit, I don't even know where I'm going to put my furniture yet to know where I want to put that. Yeah. You yeah. know, so you're guessing. Yeah. And so, you know, it, this time I did a lot better because it was my second go round and I learned a lot. And I, and I, like, for example, they don't put, you know, when you shower, if you have a, a stand, if you have a regular um, shower, uh, not a tub, but a shower right. stall. Right. Right. They put in, they don't do like a tile on the floor. And I don't know this. They do these fiberglass trays on the bottom. And when you step mm. on it, you hear it creaking. And, you know, I'm just thinking to myself, nine years I've been in that place. I kept saying, one of these days, water's going to start coming through my main level, you know, yeah. when this fiberglass thing breaks. So I knew this time to say, I want a mud job. I yeah. want tile. And I want a mud job, and it cost me two thousand uh, bucks. Minute, wait a minute, now, hold on a second. I I know I know I've gone to certain places like the Moonlight Bunny Ranch and asked for a mud job, but <laughs> what 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 the fuck is a mud job? A mud job is a way of saying um, set the tile in mud. Yeah, uh, yeah. In, in, uh, in, in they use a screen yeah. like yeah. chicken wire. And they, uh, it's uh, real tile on the floor surrounded with a drain and all that, as opposed to the stupid fiberglass piece of shit that they put in. And, I, you know, there's a bunch of things like that that I went, OK, next time I do this, if I ever get to do it again, I know how to do it better. Uh, did you get multiple shower heads? No, I only get the. I didn't pick special shower head. Oh, you mean like did I get like the body? Uh, heads and, 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 nah. and ones on the sides. Uh, nah. uh, uh, Mike has That's his hand. Up. Most well, what size opinion. tile did you get? Did you get the uh, white oh, tile this or is... the. Uh, so it's different you know. in every. There are four and a half bathrooms in this place. And so it's different in all the bathrooms. So, yes, What's... we've got in, in the master bathroom, there's the, these big tiles, and then there's these uh, other tiles that are like long and they make like a. What do they call that around the. Oh, it's, it's like a, a design. Listello. It's called a listello. Yeah. So there's different there's different uh, kinds of you know tile in all the four bathrooms. Now uh, you have how many bedrooms? It's four bedrooms. Four bedrooms, four baths. Good, good sized place. Yeah. Uh, you know, my last place I had three and a half baths, and I couldn't use them all at the same time. Right. Yeah, well, that when I lived alone, I went around on purpose in the first two months and shit on every toilet. <laughs> You wanted I wanted to be the first. Space. I wanted to be the one to say I shit first in every toilet in this house. Damn it! Now, uh, did you? Do, <laughs> are you going to do a Renee and and at least in the master get uh, one of those uh, uh, self douching, self cleaning toilets? So I would have done that, mm -hmm. except I we didn't. We had the conversation too late, <clears throat> too late to the point where I couldn't get them to put the power outlet in under the toilet. That wow. was already that time had already come and gone. So if I want to do it, it's going to have to be post. You know, they're going to cut a hole yeah. in the wall and do the. I don't yeah. have a. I don't have a ground fault circuit uh, down down below the toilet. So if we had had that discussion six months ago, yeah, I would have done that. Yeah. Well, just if no ground fault. It'd be a shocking experience. That's true. That's <laughs> correct. Shock That's the correct. balls. And yeah. Anyway, so uh, it sounds it sounds like uh, you know it sounds like I you're picked out my I picked out the room for my new studio. Mm-hmm going to be bigger it's going to have a, a lot bigger studio oh okay but only but only one window in it which is good this particular uh this particular bedroom only has one window in it so it's going to be the new studio and i'm psyched to get get her going i'm psyched to have you getting in there because we could sure use some new promos yeah it's coming yeah <laughs> a couple of more months yeah. if there's I'm, I miss that room. if there's a gab net here studio. by september you know i mean why, why? What happened? Did I miss something? No, nothing happened. It's just we don't have any audience tonight. It's like, well, really, you know, that's 
everybody's busy worrying about or or, or watching the news because of uh, all of the events of uh, of today yeah, right. with uh, Trump just throwing his hands up in the air and saying, well, I don't care, let it fail. Just like, you know, just like Obama should have done after Bush took over, right? He should have said, ah, if the country's in default, yeah, let it be yeah, the Republicans' yeah, fault. Yeah, yeah, just yeah, let yeah, it, forget about, we'll do anything you know, about it. Forget about it, saving it, these companies. You know. It proves that the whole place is a swamp and they can't get anything done. Oh, yeah, but, but this was the guy that was going to clear the swamp instead. He's, right. he's the lead he fraud. Well, he's, he's up against Democratic obstructionists and the Republicans. No. Oh, wait a minute. Wait a minute. In this particular situation, no <clears throat> Democrat had anything to do with this. That's right. Well, they wouldn't let them play their reindeer games. Well, let, let me, let no, me just say this you're about wrong. that. You're wrong when you say that the Democrats ruined this thing. No. no they I just simply, they, they, they simply they took were the position. No, they weren't. No, they were they just. They were asked. No, then I guess some of those Republicans are obstructionists, too. They did. They, yes, but uh, the <laughs> Democrats did not want to add their two cents. Uh, you know, no, they weren't asked to. They, they weren't, weren't invited. They weren't Nobody invited. invited. No, they weren't. They weren't. Uh, you know, uh, he said he wanted to work with Please, both sides. more people and, call up uh, so we can shoot. tell him that, yeah, that uh, uh, um, well, this guy ain't going to be able to help. Bill, you're right. Yeah. You're right. He wanted to work with both sides, but... Yeah. The people in the House and the Senate, the Republicans, it, did not. Did not. And well. they're just as bad as the Democrats. Well, yeah, you're right, I'm right. You know? No, you're in not that regard, right. you're right, because he has said it. I'd like to see both sides get together and, and right. do something about it. But Mitch McConnell and, uh, you know, the neo Nazi boy there and the other uh, the guy, what's his name? Paul Ryan wouldn't have anything to do with it. Well, well, I, when well, you, you know, said they, Nazi, they, I thought you were they, talking about it, Tony. If they if they worked <laughs> in hi, hi Tony, if they worked and revised, if they revised, uh, if they revised uh, Obamacare and uh, did things to bolster it, uh, it probably could be very good for the entire American public. However, right. they're going to let this thing just die, and if it dies, it's going to be their fault because they're not going to do anything about it. You know, what they what they fail to see is that if they the moderates on both sides could fix Obamacare and make it great, yeah, the conservative group that thirty or so they wouldn't matter, yeah. and and the and the and like the real left wouldn't matter either. There's enough moderate votes to pass something good if they both if both sides work together. Yeah, but they won't uh, do it. No, they they all suck, and they should all be shot. And it'll be interesting to see what happens in the next election yeah. for Senate and, and you know, but, the but next, this, so what is it, this 18 whole, or 19? This whole, this whole yeah. idea that, uh, that, uh, that uh, Trump came up with was, well, we'll just let Obamacare fail. Well, no, that's not what your job as president is to do. Your job is to, as long as it exists, try and give it whatever support you can until maybe you come up with some better ideas. But apparently you haven't your people haven't come up with better ideas. No, They've, they got nothing. You want to talk got, you want to talk about obstruction. You want to That's talk funny. About, they ran for seven years on a platform right. to repeal and replace and they have no ideas. They got and, and then the president has the balls to say the Democrats have no ideas. A nobody asked them and B, they put a pan a plan in place that yes, it's not perfect, it needs help. But at least they said, it, they, a, said the, they said it's a, failing. <laughs> of course, they say it's failing. They, it doesn't have a chance to succeed. Well, it, because it, they it, don't want it to. No, because they're not going to give it the fuel it needs to succeed. Right. Now they're you just they're going to strangle it and let it die, and then say, "See, we told you it was going to die." No, but they <clears> could have jumped in and made it work, or they could have done things to bolster it or to modify it to where it really works better. Uh, but no, yes, uh, Mike. Yeah, Trump says yeah, the Obama the care fails. Right. Mm -hmm. Why doesn't he help it along by just doing a couple of steps to improve it? You know, do something to. How can I say? It's just kind of get it. You know, like you said, give it a little shot. You know, in the right places to keep it running for a while until they pass the health care. No, they want that thing to fail and say, see, look, Obamacare fa you know, failed. I don't, I don't think that's going to happen. I don't think it's going to fail because, because the Republicans to. are going to have to answer for it. The president can say what he wants, but it's the Republicans in charge in the House, the Senate, 
and in the White House. And if people start losing their health care, they're not going to hold the Repu- they're not going to hold the yeah. Democrats responsible. They're, they're going to hold the Republicans. Re- yeah. As soon, as soon as you give an entitlement, you can't take it away. Well, they're that's not- what I'm saying. It, but if they let it fail, Wait a minute. What, what, like what, Trump what said, what entitlement? Today, what entitlement are you talking about? Uh, the uh, subsidies for Obamacare. Those aren't entitlements. Yes, they are. No, they're they they are. No, part they're of, not. No, they're not. They're part of the program. Oh. No, they're they're uh, being. No, no they're your being idea. Su- people to begin with, I hate, I hate this by, term. Uh, I hate this term. When people are subsidized, you you, you make entitlement sound like a terrible thing, and yet when well, you, you can, go, wait you a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute, hold on a second. When they go ahead and they subsidize businesses in this country so that they can survive, we don't call that an entitlement. You should. You know, what, sure. and what's, exactly what's wrong what with an entitlement? I'm sick and tired of people saying that my Medicare is an entitlement. No, it isn't an entitlement. I paid for it. It's something they well, owe me. You didn't pay for Obamacare. That's an entitlement. But you I, didn't, you didn't pay for it in your taxes. But I pay, I pay, no, no, you didn't right. pay, I pay, I, I pay for Medicare. Yeah, now... I pay you for made, Medicare. Medicare, and that is not an entitlement. You made a deal with the government. Yeah, but they call it, but, but, the, but yet the Republicans refer to it as an entitlement. I'm not referring to it as an entitlement. Well, Obamacare I'm saying your your pals do. The uh, feed of cheese given the welfare recipients is a, is an entitlement. Uh, How do you know they didn't get the feed of cheese? I, I, I read that. Really? That's not real cheese. You nice. don't have to refrigerate it. Yeah. Yeah. You can stick it yeah. to the ceiling top. You make boxes with it. Any cheese you don't have to refrigerate is like plastic. Tonight, I'm thinking of turning off the uh, the video. Uh, because well, I'll, nobody... I'll tell you what. I, there is, I feel, good news. Well, I was heartened by something today. Yeah. The, the fact that the Republicans can't, repeat, can't come up with an idea to either repeal and replace or just repeal it. Yeah. Makes me feel like Social Security will never go away. No, oh, shit. It, because if they can't make this work, they're going to have to make it. They're going to whoever's on the hook, whoever's on the hook has got something to lose, and that's a whole lot of guys out there who want to keep their their positions. And well, they realize that, like you said, whether you want to call this an entitlement or whether you want to call it our right to health care, whatever. I don't care which word you choose. We have it now. And you can't take it away. That's and right. it's the same thing with Social Security, and it's the same thing with Medicare. I just I feel better about that today. That's yeah. Good point. yeah. Well, uh, even even Trump said that he says. You might be getting single you, pay if not. Yeah. Once you give some, once you give something, you can't take it away. Right. See, and, I don't think uh, they're giving anything. Well, well uh, did, did they the allocate it, let's put it that way. now who are getting uh, 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 Medicare, Medicaid through uh, through Obamacare? Did they pay anything for it? Who's that? Say that again, Phil. The people that didn't have insurance that signed up that didn't have enough income to to have to pay. Mm-hmm. Uh, to, uh, now that is basically Medicare. Right, um, are Medicaid. they paying for anything? Or I'm not sure. I'm not no, they're not paying. And so okay. what happens is the government is subsidizing that to as an entitlement, so that those people will have the uh, the Obamacare, which was a mandate. You had to have insurance. Uh, now that's one thing I disagree with. I, yeah, they should drive a car. You shouldn't have to drive a car. You know, if they tell you, you got to say that again. If you if you, if, you if mean you, would you you need, you need insurance to drive a car. Right. And then you say, I don't want to get insurance to drive my car, then you don't drive. It's it's very simple. And right. if you want and if you don't want insurance, then, then you don't get health care, right? You Are you really no. serious about that? No, you get health care. You but should have to give it to the people who can't afford it. Come on. It's what about insurance. what about homeowners insurance? I have to get homeowners insurance. I just signed up the See, papers tonight. I have to have a loan with a bank. And you oh. don't own your house, the bank well, owns it. Well, there you go. But I mean that's the same thing. Insurance is insurance. No, they're, they're mandating I have to pay for insurance. Right now, if you if you didn't pay cash for your car, then uh, the bank wants to have their asset covered, and so therefore you have to have insurance. If you buy a house and the bank is holding the mortgage, they want their asset insured. Uh, but if you own the thing straight out, you don't have to have insurance. Well, who says you own yourself? 
Wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Jeff has not talked all so, night. Let so, him say something. Yeah, so, uh, I I have a car, and I paid for it a hundred percent. Right. Okay. So, but I still have to have insurance. That's in right. In case I have an accident with you, and I have to protect your car. Also. You're allowed to self-insure, Jeff. You can self-insure your liability. Well, I do. I mean, self. What do you mean by self-insure? Uh, you put up a bond. Okay. Uh, or, or oh, you know, be like rich. Dollar bond. Yeah, that's, you gotta be rich. That's a, a great. That? Well, that's if a you great don't idea. want it, that's what. Do you ever do that? Huh? Have you? Do you do that? No, of course no. not. Okay. 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 Let me let me let me jump in here because I mean <laughs> Phil 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 you make all these spurious arguments and yet you don't face the basic argument and that is that when you have people who are sick they cost this country and the citizens of this country money no matter what okay what, what's the, the bad guy? health well let me finish damn it you know I mean I'm talking and you just jump right fucking in and I can't finish my thought. Uh, well, give it a shot. I'll give it a shot. If I remember what I was going to say now, uh, the fact is sick. that when people are sick, when you have people in this country who are ill, if you have a populace that is not of good health, and we know in this country that we do not have good health because in if you look at the rest of the world, we're like number 36 in this area, okay? That the better we have, better health we have for our citizens the better off we're going to be. It's going to wind up costing us money if we don't. Does anybody else besides Phil disagree with me on that? No, and you're right. Can I say something, Alex? Yeah. This this may have nothing to do with, well, like, this could be towards Phil. Let's say, like you said, Alex, we insured everybody, which I think we should be single payer. But, I'm, like, around my area here, like, the, there used to be so many hospitals that were open. So many are closed now because Phil... The hospitals are just going broke because they're not getting paid. Wouldn't they rather get paid now? And, 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 and you know who's driving nothing? who's driving them broke is the insurance companies. And you know yeah. why the insurance companies exactly. are driving them broke? Because way back when, uh, uh, I believe it was uh, it was uh, Nixon or Reagan who uh, said to the uh, uh, insurance companies, "Hey, uh, you don't have to be nonprofit any longer." Well, insurance Reagan. companies were nonprofit at that time. Was it Reagan? Yeah. I yeah. Reagan. Oh, yeah. And they're still going to make money. Come on. It, yeah, but no, but I mean, money. the fact is, Best. when you don't have to make money, you you then give the best possible prices you can. You don't have to make a profit. You get what I'm saying? And, and what we're talking about is we turn people's good health or ability to get good health care over to a bunch of people who are now greedy and trying to get the biggest buck possible. That the two of them don't work. Well, something went wrong. You know, it's bad for the American public that insurance companies are allowed to make uh, a profit. Gonna, you may lose me for a minute here. Why? Uh, <laughs> if I click this button that says continue installation. What, what are you um, trying to install? Uh, uh, it's uh, the Color Monkey software that froze oh, up on me. Yeah. I'm trying to reinstall it. <laughs> and uh, uh, it, because I think I corrupted it. Oh no, he's got a virus. You, know, so, you couldn't do this virus. before the show, and you couldn't do this after the show. You have to do it while we're on. I've been what doing it for the last it? 45 minutes. This has been uh, the bane of my existence. He's probably got legal software. Can I ask you something about, something about the, about the medical? Uh, yeah. it, there's something called the Hippocratic Oath. Mm -hmm. And these doctors took this oath, and they're supposed to treat people regardless of whether they can pay for it or not. Mm -hmm. And that's their job. Now, where did we forget that? Well, we forgot that when the insurance companies started charging them a lot of money every year for their malpractice insurance. Yeah, right. what about when, the, when we used to go to the doctor's office when all of a sudden it was, it was like, I don't know, let's just say $10. Now to walk into an office, it's 150 bucks. What yeah. went wrong? And, and I'll tell you right now that a lot of doctors still will live by the Hippocratic Oath. I mean, they find somebody who's very ill, they will do everything they can uh, to, to, to help them. But, uh, and by rights, they should. Well, by rights, they should. Uh, but th that, doesn't, that doesn't do away with the need that we have. You see, uh, here's what I don't understand, and it just doesn't make sense to me, that 
we are one of only two uh, industrialized nations in this world that doesn't have single-payer health care. Now, all these other countries did it, and they didn't seem to have a problem getting it done. You know, you go to France, single payer. You go to England, single payer. You go up to the Scandinavia, single payer. What about Germany? You go to Australia, single payer. What? What I, about where Putin lives? Does Putin have single payer? Uh, I, I believe they do. Yes. Uh, you know, you know who doesn't. You know who doesn't. Yeah, maybe he asked Putin that when they were having that hour long yeah, meeting. He, 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 yeah, 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 oddly time. enough, you know who doesn't have single payer is China, and they're they're working on it. They want to get it. But they, you know, and it's a communist country. It should have. They, the it, commies are treating their people better than us. Yeah, well, sure. Mm. You know, who was that guy that just died uh, or was uh, killed in prison in China? Uh, Zhao. Uh, he was the uh, guy behind the uh, Tiananmen Square uh, 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 protest. He, uh, he, was a, he was a writer, a journalist. And uh, now also there's... Uh, you know, in uh, in countries, does Iran have uh, a single payer? Uh, Iran is not a, what we call what we refer to as Third an industrial. Country, is, it? It, it's okay. it's not what we call no, an industrial nuclear power. No, but we don't call them an industrial nation. They're not they're not part of that that uh, equation, so to speak. I but see. I who knows? I mean, they may have single payer for all I know. You know, yeah. I would, Israel. Israel. Uh, Israel is a socialistic country. Yeah. So they probably do have but single they, payer. Yeah. Yeah, I'm not sure they do. But, but, yeah, no, but Matt, why, why does this idea so elude us in this country? Because I look at the government, and I don't trust the government. <laughs> You're very happy with Social Security. You're very happy with Medicare. But I, I look at it as another boondoggle that the government is just going to take the money and, and misspend well, it. Well, no, the Republicans took the money and misspent it. They took a lot of the Social Security money and spent it on wars that they ra waged while they were in office. And, uh, you know, it was Al and, Gore who used the term, and, and quite rightly so, that Social Se Security should be a locked box. It should not be, the money should only go to what it is paid, people have paid in for. Uh, that'd be a wonderful thing. No, but, but it's that, not. No, no, no it, it is a wonderful thing, and that's the way it should be. And it's my money, and you're out going out and spending it without me approving it. And if the queen had balls, she'd be a king. Well, yeah, but you know? now, but what you're saying is okay, so these she people could. can. We have to expect that this country is going to fuck us over. And yes. and leave it at that. You know what, and, gets, and, what gets me is that you you have this disdain for government, but you don't have <clears> disdain for business. But business has more of a reason to want to fuck you. For profits. True. That's right. But that if this fucks me and I stop buying from that business, I have you a vote. Don't, you don't know. You have a vote with our government, too. Yeah, but yeah. It doesn't seem to matter in California. You have more of a, you have more of a well, that, you have more of a vote than you do with a, com a company. Yeah, I, I have an economic vote with a company. If I don't like the way XYZ company operates or, or does what they do, I don't have to do business with them. But you don't get to know that kind of stuff about a company. Well, yeah, you know they they say here's companies that uh, that aren't green, or here's companies. So those people that want the company to be green, or if they don't want them to deal with Russia, or they don't want them to deal with uh, certain kinds of things, he, uh, they say, well, I'm not going to let my fund invest in that company, or I'm not going to buy those products. And uh, it doesn't take long until a company sees uh, the the you know the, not the buying problems. Mine. Hey, the takes target, over. target uh, just had something go on with it. I don't remember what the conspiracy, what the issue was, but uh, people said they didn't want to shop there, and they started shopping at Walmart instead uh, because Target did something that pissed them off. And it might have been the Republican types that got pissed off. I don't, re I, I don't exactly remember what the situation was. There are a couple of places I will refuse to go into a Walmart, and I refuse to eat a Chick Fil A. Yeah. I because I don't like the politics of Chick-fil-A, and I, I hate what Walmart does to people and communities. So I don't give a crap. When I see it online, oh, Walmart, I can get it for $50 cheaper. You know what? I'm going to spend 50 bucks more. Well, I'm so glad. So you're right in that I regard. But I most agree. I agree with you. I, I will never shop most at a Walmart. Don't. I won't either. 
I'll tell you, I, I shopped at a Walmart once, and I bought something, and I walked from the Walmart to my car, and the thing I bought broke. I will tell you this, though. Once you know, my, my wife belongs to this Facebook group where they have what they call these glitches all the time in yeah. the computer system, and these people find them. And it's like today she was telling me about one. It's a $400 computer for 150 bucks. It's obviously a cl- computer glitch, and it's going on at Walmart. I told her, if you could go and get it go do it because you fucking walmart you're not uh, spending money there so i don't that's the only yeah, time i'll ever let her there, there are other companies that you know there are people that yeah. say oh this company makes weapons and i'm not going to buy uh, from a company that makes weapons now i i would i i like weapons but uh you know there there are people out there that have their economic vote and they that use it is and the stupidest thing i've ever heard anybody say i like <laughs> weapons how do you Mike okay anything you buy from uh, Walmart it's a rebuild a friend of mine took a computer part he looked at it there's a whole bunch of uh, redone parts to it and they say quote a new item which is a bunch of bullshit I'm not buying that Mike my brother's in the my brother's in a business where he deals with these places. What they do is they uh, what they do is they come to you and they as a company and they say uh, they did this. Did you ever hear a lawn boy, uh, a snapper? Was it snapper or lawn boy? One of the high end lawnmower companies. Yeah. Walmart went to them and said, "We want a three hundred dollar version of your lawnmower, a two hundred dollar version of your lawnmower, and a one hundred dollar version of your lawnmower." And and that company said, "No, we're not doing that." Because we don't build lawnmowers like that. That's not what we do. We don't build they, junk. We stand wanted, behind our products. They wanted they, to prostitute the name. Correct. And yeah. so what Walmart said is, if you don't, we'll just we'll just we'll screw you. We'll we'll bring in another lawnmower company, because they were doing business with them. It's a lot a lot of distribution you're giving up. Mm-hmm. So they bully you, and and yep. uh, the the. Because my cousin, my cousin was working for the company at the time, and the company chose to give up about thirty percent of its business because they wouldn't prostitute then, themselves. Wow! Then why aren't they taking care of their employees, Walmart? Oh, because they don't give a rat's ass about employees. Then I would not just, just tell just them don't, don't, don't tell but, them to go fuck themselves. You know? Don't did you ever watch the? That news 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 Amazon. Did you ever watch the Walmart uh, documentary? I think it's on uh, Netflix. Mm, they have a, they have an amazing deal going on. They don't pay medical care. You can't get medical care from them. They uh, tell you at HR. Yeah, they that, give no, you that, the, that, the form. It's an old that's an old documentary, uh, Rob. And all yeah. all deference to you because it was horrible what they were doing because they were wow. using your money and my money. In order to supply some kind of health care to their people by telling them to where they could go and get it for free, right? Yeah. But, but but but, but it's an old it's an old documentary. It's about fifteen years old, and yeah. and, and they, have they, things really changed. Uh, 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 things have changed. They do offer health care now. You know, health pro- programs to their uh, to their employees. Yeah, for everybody. And all Walmart's are zoo. But but still, Walmart's a terrible outfit. It's a terrible oh. outfit. Walmart is a zoo. That's all. Here's why. Here's why. Here's why. Let me tell you why Walmart is terrible. Walmart is terrible because it goes into a community and it literally guts its. It takes the guts out of its economic base. Uh, uh, All the big boxes do. Well, not not Uh, not quite. No, not quite in the way that that Walgreens does. Walgreens Uh, does it by by. To begin with, they were the first ones to go and have all the products are, that are in Walmart made in China. Okay? Yeah. So they were making them cheaper. Then they were selling them cheaper here. And mom and pop stores couldn't compete with that. You know, and uh, even uh, some of the bigger stores couldn't compete with that. Well, they, they literally, it, 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 like here in New York City, do you know it, they, made, they passed the law that Walmart cannot have a store in Manhattan? Right. Good. Right. And there's only one Kmart there. There in, in uh, Penn Station. There's uh, uh, actually, I think it's not Penn Station. I think it's down around 18th Street or some. I, I no, know, it's I, right in, right in Penn Station. Oh, it, there's, there's another uh, one though. There is another huh? one. Then there's oh, another then there's one. another one. Okay, yeah. so there's. I know so, there's yeah. one in Penn but, Station. I was there so when it all this all this conversation proves my point that you can vote with your economic feet 
and you don't have to do business with those corporations. And many of those corporations, maybe not Walmart, but many of those corporations yeah. will. Well, buck all right, under. now let me let me let me let me yeah. throw this at you then, Phil. If I can go anywhere I want to, where can I go get health insurance except from four? different companies well that's the fault of obamacare if they well, no, would it's allow not the fault of the, obamacare it's not, obamacare. It's not it has well, nothing to do with obamacare it's it does no, it has no, they, it, well, it, it has nothing to do with obamacare the fact of the matter is there are only f about four insurance companies left they've all well, co-mingled they've with all each merged other. they've all merged i just got a i just got a new card because uh united healthcare is gone it's now part of uh Whatever the fuck that I uh, my new card. Uh, it's the other big one. Uh, so, yeah. no, or, uh, it's not it. No, it's not uh, it. It's the, well, you know, all I'm saying uh, is is that uh, I I don't really have a large choice in in medical insurance, and and no. none of these people are competing against each other because they're all colluding with each other on prices. Well, one of the biggest problems we have with medical right now is that it costs like uh, thirty dollars for an aspirin in a in a in a hospital. Yeah, I mean, try again. I have try news. again. It's more expensive than that, right? No, uh, I think my friend of mine said he paid forty-five for an aspirin. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, yeah uh, that, uh, oddly enough, uh, Rob, that's nothing new bucks. either. That's been going on for <laughs> so about thirty but years. There, but why though? That there's no need for that. There's got to be a way to get the cost down. If yeah, we can, if we're charging forty-five dollars for a Tylenol. Something. Here's is the way wrong. we get the. Here's the way we get the cost down cost down on all of this it's called single sure. payer yeah. it won't it won't happen you you're deluding yourself no, no you i know it, so. it no, but, will but, happen yeah. phil phil the more the more the more, the more your republicans be. fuck with this health care the more the word single payer starts to drift He's to the surface and you know maybe it won't happen in my lifetime but it's drifting to the surface it. because people are going you know if i get sick i'm fucked <clears throat> I am seriously fucked, and I got news for you. Even if you're insured, you're seriously fucked. Of Do you course. know I have Oxford? Yeah, right. I have Oxford as my secondary. My primary is Medicare. Do you know that in all the time I've had Oxford through my wife at work, hmm. I have never collected a penny from Oxford <laughs> because I've never That's made right. their minimum? See? Your yeah, minimum is a thousand. Their, a minimum for me is a thousand dollars in network out of network three thousand i have you're never not, you're I, not treating it as a you're not treating it as a supplemental you're treating it as a it's a primary well, no no uh, no insurance it, they, you're using no it's secondary. no it's they're not treating it as a secondary even right. though it is my secondary and they know it's my secondary right. they're still making her bosses pay the same amount of money for our insurance that we would get for full for right. that 20%. So you're, you're getting screwed uh, and you're not getting yes, the coverage but I you want. Not, I have not seen a penny. Right. You're Oxford. not getting the coverage you want because you have the wrong coverage. If you'd get a supplemental. Uh, hey, uh, we have no. Hey, my wife gets free medical for crying out loud. Her company, her, her company pays every penny of it. We do yeah, not pay a not cent right. into it. Wait a minute. We don't pay yeah. a cent into it. Okay. So you're getting in, what you pay for. In that respect, what do you mean we get what we pay for? They're going to have, whether they get Oxford or whether they get somebody else, they're going to have any one of them. This is the best plan they could come up with, with an right. office that only has, in their company, in the United States, four people. Okay? Correct. So, but it's not good for you. It's so not it's good not for me. It's not supplemental insurance. It's, but, it's not supplemental but, insurance. But, it's good for the other the, three uh, guys. On, on the other the hand, office. if I paid for supplemental insurance, guess who I'm going to be paying supplemental insurance to? Right, but you'd have a supplemental policy guess, that would yeah, pay the yeah. stuff. Oh, oh, really? Oh, yeah, really? Probably, there's, probably, still uh, a uh, there's still a deductible there. There's yes. still a minimum there. But it, it, you're, you're getting a $1,000 deductible against a 20% pay policy uh, look, so you'll look, never you 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 you've got the whole thing wrong the fact is that oh, the insurance company should say oh well marjorie miller and her husband are both getting medicare so this is going to be a supplemental plan and we're going to charge less money and the rules are going to be different because it's 20 percent that we have to pay but no they're still charging the same amount of money they would be charging them for right. anybody else in I, the office 
but I get I get what Phil's trying to say. If your if your wife's company is buying a regular plan, that's right. how they're going to govern it. If they bought you a supplemental plan, it'd be different. So you're trying to use a, yeah, but a, a you know, regular even plan we, even in place if, of a supplemental plan. And, yeah. and even if even if we, even if we went to a supplemental plan, okay. Uh, they still, I would still, who, who would be get, giving me the supplemental plan? No, if I go it through ARP, if, no, it would be United through ARP. Right, but it's okay. a different, it's a different, different type of insurance. Yes, but what I'm saying is they wouldn't start paying from dollar one. There's still a minimum. There's still a deductible. Know, Jeff, Jeff, what kind of supplemental do you have? Oxford. Oxford. Is it a real it's supplemental a, plan? Yeah. yeah okay, so how does it, how does it what's work? Your, what's your deductible? Well... Remember, I'm on the government basic plan, so um, there's only a certain percentages that that they could pay, and and the way it works for me, I I do very well. So, yeah. so you you just had something, and you said you didn't have to pay anything out of pocket, right? That's right. I'm gonna. I'm so what's my wife supposed to do? Tell her boss we're not going to take your insurance. We're going to go out and pay for our own. Well, it's be cheaper in the long run because you haven't gotten. Be anything not, back wouldn't be cheap. It, it wouldn't be cheaper for me. Yeah, how much did you spend in in, uh, in deductibles? Well, the only, the only reason ever... the only reason I haven't hit the deductibles or the minimums because I don't I I don't see the doctors that often. All right, then you got nothing to complain about. But Jeff had a had a good point, you know, because he's got. And the by right the way, kind of by the way, I I I go some places like my physical therapist, and they're not in network. Okay. Well, can you ask for one that's in network? Uh, he, they, uh, I could, but <laughs> I, would, I, I, I would, I would have to go somewhere else. I, you know, well, I, I pay twenty. Uh, no, you know what it is? I pay. No, they are in network, but I pay twenty five bucks each time I go there because I haven't hit my thousand dollars yet. Mm. And you'll never do because your thousand dollars is is twenty percent. Of uh, you know, you're oh, look. You, what you're asking me to do, oh, Phil, yeah. is to pay money for a medical plan that right. uh, that I am not uh, probably not going to get used much anyway. I mean, I I do have a medical plan through her, and if I ever get really sick, they're going to have to pay. Okay, well, but I'm glad. But barring that, I'm not getting see the future. Uh, and that you, you know, know, I mean, that we, that's we, why we people get listen, insurance we, not because they're we, sick; they we get thought, it because they might. Thought, be. I can't even talk while you're. Go ahead, you run the show. All right, uh, I'm going. I'm going to uh, reboot. Uh, I'll talk to you later. Okay, bye. Uh, it's yeah. Let's see what it's doing. Yeah, I, because your fucking thing, your chromatter or whatever, whatever yeah, that color thing is, I, I is, is, thing is, is more off. important than this show. You're not even paying attention to it. So goodbye. I'm paying attention. Goodbye. It's just doing it up in the corner there. I got a 30 inch monitor. He's probably signing up for Obamacare right now. Yeah. Yeah. Right. right By now. the way, you know what I heard tonight is that one of the reasons why Obamacare is, is hurting even more is because right. the White House, the government has stopped advertising signing up for it. Oh. Yeah, because they're not requiring that you sign up for it. So they stopped advertising to let people know it's time to sign up for it. Wait a minute, wait a minute. Where 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 did he suddenly get to change the law? Uh, he made a uh, he wrote one of those things that Rob uh, loves. Uh, 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 that doesn't mean shit to a tree. That's all well, just his it fancy changed. little signature on a piece of paper. Well, uh, while you weren't looking, it changed. And it it, uh, it, it, sh it I don't think it should because uh, the law was that there's how Obamacare works. Right. They're, they're doing everything they can to make it fail. They're doing, so you yeah. see, and and, they, and it's going to backfire on them because they're in charge. Oh, yeah. yeah, Democrats are not in charge. They can't, while you're not looking, do something. Yeah, well, so, Pelosi, Pelosi's looking at the new, her new office right now. Uh, she's uh, saying, "Ooh, Speaker Pelosi," uh, yeah, and and that's probably what's going to happen. Let me tell you, man. I have a feeling your your boy Trump's going to go down too in flames. Now they're talking about getting yeah. rid of. They're talking about taking the security clearance away from his son-in-law. Yeah. Well, maybe they should. But you know, uh, this um, the reason that you're going to have Obamacare continue is because of the North Vietnamese. Uh, when, did that, when did that come in play? I'll tell you where it came into play. Thank you for asking. Uh, <laughs> where in the hell? Where, where in the hell did Steve Puff, uh, marshmallow <laughs> fat man with the with the fake oh, wig? No, 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 no. North Vietnam. You said North, North Vietnam. Vietnam. 
not now, North Korea. What happened was they beat the shit out of McCain for about five or six years in the uh, Hanoi Hilton. Now the guy's got this blood clot in the front of his brain, and they had to open up his skull to to get this uh, five centimeter. I mean, it was big. It was uh, like two inches. And, and of this was blood caused. Clot. This was caused by the Vietnamese. Probably. I mean, they beat the shit out of him. Well, may uh, maybe he would have had the blood clot a little earlier if it was caused by the Vietnamese. Well, you know, maybe he was walking around with it a while. But he was having problems remembering stuff, and and he was during the uh, uh, during the interviews that he was having for. I, I, don't I remember think. that. That's right. Yeah, when he right. was asked, and he was he was like speaking gibberish. Well, also, when he was also, asking also, questions. also, the guy yeah, should probably can you help me. The guy should probably have retired already. Yeah, he's eighty years old. Yeah. But you know the the thing is this the, uh -huh. where the blood clot was located on that part of the brain is the one that uh, helps you with communications and so forth so anyway i believe that possibly this is uh, you know long term illness that was created now without his vote they needed his vote I, they weren't even sure they were going so to get his vote so i have to go all the way vote. back i have to go all the way all the way back to ho chi minh and blame him for the health care yeah. bill Obamacare. but you, it's ho chi minh's fault that we aren't going to get that thing passed, and that Obamacare is going to stay in uh, intact. You're delusion, Phil. You are totally delusion. <laughs> well, think about it. Totally delusion. McCain is the vote they needed, and without McCain, they can't pass it. So you they're delusion. Totally, how, how can you start blaming somebody that happened over what 40, 50 years ago? He has a blood clot now. And it's That's like Alex. Yeah. Hey, you, you, you Jesus know. Christ, <laughs> <laughs> Where the hell? Where are you so goddamn delusional? Who says that? It sounds like Alex Jones. I think he's fucking with you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know, but I know that's a reach. But the thing is, the, 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 yeah. the truth of it is, it's it's McCain's, McCain's illness that may end up uh, costing the Republicans the ability to do what they want to do. I tell you what, McCain is a, is a free thinker. He doesn't <coughs> find uh, 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 I don't think you're going to get his vote uh, anyway. They can also blame Susan. What's her name? Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, who who I quite frankly oh got. Maine the gal from Maine. Yeah. Uh -huh. Yep. Yeah, and there's one other one. Uh, the uh, libertarian. Uh, what's his name? Paul Rand. Rand Paul. Rand Paul. Rand Paul. So you know, I mean. Uh, they got to be, and I really think she's brave because Rand Paul, it does not really consider himself a Republican as much as he considers himself a uh, libertarian, libertarian, but she yeah. considers herself a real Republican. And she's just said, this is bullshit. I can't, yep. I can't go along with it. She's the one oh. that really has stonewalled it. This whole thing is bullshit. Uh, you know, I don't I don't care for Obamacare. I don't care for what these Republicans are coming up with because it, it's all bullshit. They they just want to tear all it right, down. All right. So, Phil. Thank but, you. Look, thank you, Phil. You're right. You're 100 yes. percent right. Yes. But the, they the, just want to tear it down and they don't give a damn what they replace it with right. or nothing. <clears throat> yeah. I mean, the, the of this, they're all they're doing is just tearing everything down and saying, so what? Screw you. That's what they're saying. I mean, yeah, it's obvious we, we, to me that if other other countries in this world have been able to come up with med medical plans, and I'm not saying we have to have a single payer, but that they've been able to come up with a method of making sure their populace was covered by insurance, I, I, I don't know why the so-called greatest country in the world, which we're proving we're clearly not, but the greatest country in the world can't come up with a plan that works. Are you awake, Brian? Yeah. Oh, okay. I just want to make sure you're okay. Yes, yes, uh, yes, Jeff. I was in Australia uh, one time, and um, I had to go to the to the hospital to get my blood checked, and uh, blah blah blah. And it was a freebie, and and the and the people there were terrific, and and the technology was first was, rate, yeah. if good, better than what we had. And it was well organized, and it's a great place to go. I would recommend it. And oh. and believe it or not, if you were in England and all of a sudden you became deathly ill and you had to go to a hospital, you, they would cover you under their under their health care. Uh, you know, 
uh, it would, they wouldn't say, I'm sorry, we can't treat you here. Now, I was in France once, and they told me I had to go to a private doctor. I couldn't go to the, the main hospital there because I, had like a, I was getting a strep throat. And uh, so I had to go to a private doctor, and that poor guy was, looked like he wasn't making much money because he had a shitty-looking office and everything, but he was a good enough doctor. But in France, you, you, they, they don't necessarily help you if you're from another country. But certain countries go, yeah, look, you know, on us. This is what we've got. We're happy to serve you. You know, well, you know when I go to other countries, I have, uh, especially when I'm scuba diving, I have a, a, an, a, an insurance policy that will handle evacuations, helicopter evacuations, uh, 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 chambers, you know, for uh, uh, if I get the bends. The, the, uh, the removal of jaw teeth, that's another one. <laughs> but, uh, you know, and so it's not an expensive policy. Uh, it's maybe 120 bucks a year. But it only covers you when you're diving. So when you're traveling, don't you usually get a, an insurance policy that uh, extends and and takes care of uh, medical out of country? Well, in yeah, in, in Canada, in Canada, you pay I think something like twenty five dollars when you come to the United States, and then you, all your medical is handled is paid for by the Canadian government. Yeah. So there is a, there is an insurance. Wow. An insurance. You mean for anything that happens to you if you're here? Yeah. Wow. Yeah, I, was, uh, I think it's something cheap. like twenty-five bucks. If I remember, I mean, uh, Jim told me about it. It was, it was something like twenty-five dollars, something like that. You know. Uh, yeah. Oh, Jeff's a diver. I didn't know that. Was was. Yeah, was. So was. anyway, let me let me tell you something before we get back to this uh, whole discussion. So uh, we are now babysitting a cat. And I would open the door and let the cat in. Only the cat uh, loved it. it really wants to get into this room because the one room oh, I keep the door me. closed on, right? <laughs> and so I, I, she may even be sitting right outside the door waiting for the door to open. And I, mm -hmm. I, I would show you the cat, only uh, uh, she walks, she likes to get on the desk here and then walk over the keyboards. Yeah. <laughs> but we have fallen in love with this animal. And, and uh, as opposed to what you said, Rob, it turns out that it was a pretty good move on our part to take the animal and bring her here. Because so she really adjusted at, pretty after quickly. After one day, she was coming out. And by oh, the good. second day, she was like, uh, you know, she's, she's now part of the house. You know, I cool. don't, you know, it really has worked out very nicely. And she's adorable. And there's a picture I took. I should put it up on my, on my Facebook page of the cat. Oh, I've seen it. Marjorie's got it. Looking out the window? Uh, no, not no, that no. One. This is a picture of the cat. Just the back of the cat standing on the, on the uh, radiator mm -hmm. looking out the window. And you oh, can see the city. Funny. You can see the city in front of her. Yeah. Nice shot. Yeah. Uh, it's, uh, it's funny you should mention that. Yesterday, uh, this gal I follow on Facebook, Pat Montadon, yeah. she was a San Francisco socialite. And uh, uh, so she's 85, yeah. lives in Beverly Hills, and decided right. that she wanted a cat. So she went to the ASPCA, tried to get a cat, and they told her that she was too old. Oh and yeah, she said that you know, when, when, when we uh, put a cat in, or a pet in a family, we want the cat to have, uh, you know, uh, uh, an opportunity uh, to, to live and uh, not, you know, be in the same position again. So she went nuts on Facebook, uh, you know, saying, you know, how could you? Marjorie has just gone crazy over this animal. Just you guys going to get one? Uh boy. Well, you know, the, the, I felt the same thing. Hold on a second. I'm getting this picture and I'm putting it on my Facebook page. Wait a minute. Hold on a second. I know what I gotta do. Mm -hmm. I gotta do this first. They're gonna wind up with a kitty cat. Huh? The, you guys are gonna wind up with a cat. Get an old cat. <laughs> well, uh, no, I don't want to get an old cat. But uh, I wouldn't get a kitten. <laughs> uh, kittens are a lot of work. Uh, uh, I don't know. I like kittens. Yeah, they're cool, but boy, they're a lot of work. This one's a lot of work. This I got, one... I have a, uh, two cats. I got one that's uh, ten, and the other one's about three. Okay, if anybody's got uh, a Facebook, I just put it up because screw yeah. it, the people aren't watching the video that much. Uh, look at that yeah, picture. Is that not a great? Have you seen anybody seeing it on my Facebook page? Oh, that's a nice picture. Isn't that a great picture? 
It's a great uh, cat picture. Yeah, I see. I see five pictures or uh, no, 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 no. In, in the in the uh, of the cat. In yeah. The well, kitchen. why don't you why don't you uh, refresh, and it will be the first picture up there. It won't even be the video. Okay. Yeah. See. Everybody, other people can see it at all. Anybody else again? Nope. Rob, are you seeing it? Uh, I'm only, uh, I'm only seeing this one. Well, but uh, you, you got to, go. you got to refresh. I did. I, well, this is a know, fresh you, thing. No, I wasn't watching the video no, before. No, you didn't. Is the no. is the video in there? No. Uh, yeah, it's up at the top. Yeah, what's at the very top? Uh, your normal stuff. You no, know, no. The, well, your, I mean, I don't know why the picture isn't going there, but I, uh, I just put it. Well, up there. maybe it's just not going on mine. Yeah. How, are you getting it, Rob? I don't have Facebook. Oh, uh, you don't. I have got it. Oh, you and you know it. what? The cat pictures I'm getting are from Marjorie. Yeah. Oh, I see. Oh, okay. Well, page. go to, go to uh, what is it that, that a, you posted? A, a, that you posted on your go, go uh, to A Bennett. Yeah. Um, but uh, it's a great it's a great cat picture. I. You know, that's the way cats are cats. awesome pets. They're great yeah, companions. I yeah, I uh, I like cat soup and uh, cat tea. What you do is you 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 attach a string yeah. to them and you put them in a pot of boiling water and you can make <laughs> cat soup. And if you take them out quickly, it's cat tea. Yeah, you know, yeah. just yeah. You know. yeah. <laughs> okay. You kill the cat. Not cat anyway, body. so if people want to go there, they can take a look at my. Uh, my uh this cat that we so this is uh her name is berta and i think she's kind of a calico and at least she has calico markings uh and she is just uh she's wonderful she's just wonderful and marjorie has just fallen so in love with this cat has marjorie ever had cats before oh yeah yeah oh. but but she said uh, but the thing is that she really fallen in love with this cat and i said don't you know i refuse to allow myself to get that attached <laughs> because, the, because you know, come next Tuesday, this cat's going home, yeah. you know. Uh, well, we, you could be the regular uncle uh, that sits the cat. And do these people travel a lot? No. Oh. No. Uh, can you give them a ticket to somewhere? Yeah, I, who knows? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But, 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 uh, Just tell them it got away. But, yeah. but, but uh, yeah, uh, give him a different pill and give him a different cat. <laughs> uh, Natalia, uh, who is the, uh, the woman uh, who owns the cat, uh, and her and her roommate, as it were, her her lover, her boyfriend, who is uh, is uh, uh, Jack uh, Gar uh, Garvin, yeah, who is a movie director. You know, I told you the whole story about him. Yeah. Uh, and uh, they he had to go to Germany to do a documentary on his time in a uh, concentration in the concentration camps, and they she was just beside herself not knowing what to do because she didn't know what to do with the cat so we just said oh well we'll go over and we'll feed it every day and then we said that's too much of a pain in the ass i can put the screens up and the cat can come and stay here you know and uh, so there's the cat and there's the screen it looks it almost looks like the cat could jump out the window but there is a screen there so uh and and uh, that's the way cats are it's her world out there Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yep. Um, just look, look out, look out to see who, who's, uh, yeah, who's out there, right? Well, I, you know, I used to have five cats at one time, because oh. every time one of our cats got pregnant, we gave them all away except for there was always one we liked, you know. So by the time we were through, we had five cats, and um, uh, I'm used to a situation where the cats, you know, deal with each other more than they deal with me. Uh, but now I've got a cat here who's very needy. And yeah, because he's all by himself. She's, she's all by, yeah. It, well, the, no, she's just very needy because, you know, there's no there's no other cat to play with. There's no other yeah. companionship. And uh, so... Uh, I, I give you three months. What do you mean you give me three he's months? He's got a cat in the house. You'll have a cat. <laughs> three Two. months. Two yeah. months. Well, it's, it's been a long time yeah. since I've had a cat. And, you know, you were right about, you know, at my age, the cat will live longer than me, probably. Yeah. I hope not, but probably. Oh, my God, that's terrible. Well, no, no I mean, you know. You know I, I, that, I, if something happens, the cat goes with the friends, and then it gets taken care of. Well, that's fine, but I'm d dead. 
<laughs> well, how old is your you know, uh, And as director? I'm sitting here and I got this cat here growing up, I, looking at me like, you know, you're you're going to be gone soon. <laughs> <laughs> I'm still, I'm still gonna be here. I mean, I never, I never got a cat in my life where I felt that the cat was gonna outlive me. All right, uh, and so I don't know what my attitude will be on this. Yeah. Well, when you're laying on the floor and the cat's not getting fed, it'll, it'll revert to eating uh, Bennett's. <laughs> you know. <laughs> yeah. And what about a dog? Uh, no, it's not a dog. Dogs guy. are too much work. Oh, yeah. uh, Tim, really? Tim Albright wrote, uh, 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 "Now you have to write a coffee table, a coffee table book, and use this for the cover." Uh, you've just That'd proved be... you like pussy. Thank you very much. That's from <laughs> yeah, yeah. Sam Forsyth. So, those are a few of the comments on that uh, on that picture. What did you do with your last five cats? What did I do? Well, they all died eventually. Oh, you know, process of you elimination. Know, a cat. cat killer. You know something, Phil? Uh, I was trying to remember. I had one cat uh, who I had to put down. Put, right. And and uh, I had somebody. I could not take the cat to the the vet. I don't to do think it. it was me. It wasn't you. I thought it might have been you. No, I, I don't think so. Yeah. Uh, I remember that cat. It, it was, it, you know, when you first moved to Sausalito, uh, but I never saw that cat in the apartment. I saw a mouse all the time. Well, mouse was the one that died that I had a friend take her. But but she died. No, no, she mouse got, was the blind one. Yeah, and mouse, mouse was going to be, somebody was going to come over and take her to the vet to have her put down because she was very yeah. sick. Mm -hmm. And she was lying on the, uh, I still cry when I think about this, she was lying on a couch yeah. uh, in the sun and died while she was letting the sun rest on her. Was that and, the couch in the living room? Yeah, yeah. So the couch they slept my list or my room. Yeah, but you, you remember when when they uh, when they evacuated the uh, yeah, yeah. side rooms? <clears throat> yeah. And I, I stayed on yeah. your sofa. But uh, I I I, I love So you know I love cats. I mean the, oh, yeah. the cat you were probably thinking about that I had to put a down earlier was was Shabbos, who was like 18 by the time he died, but he was just, you know, I, I and again, I, that's the most horrible it thing I think, I and know. and I know that Rob has has cats. It's the most horrible thing you have to do is when you have to make that decision. Yeah. Well, that's why you know I it was easier. Rob. It was easier for me to make that decision for my mother, yeah, than it was for a cat. Yeah. You, know? <laughs> you see the cat every day, but you know Rob had suggested. <laughs> He got uh, cat insurance, and so I ran out and got insurance for my little dog yeah. so that I wouldn't have to be in a position where uh, $8,000 for a cancer operation or right. put, the, cat, put right. the dog down. Now, I, you know, it's handled. And how much does that cost you a month? $33. It's worth, well worth it. Now, how much insurance do you have? Uh, they pay 80%. After the first two hundred and fifty dollars, and that was the it just happened to be the one I chose. I mean, and, I could have gotten a different policy. Eighty percent up to what? Because I like you know, I don't think there's a uh, maximum. Right, there's no maximum. Uh huh. Well, I so think you know, you you can have any pretty much any operation you need, as long as it's like you're not going to have. I I wouldn't put them through an operation if the if the vet says, look, you know, this is this is it. You know, you can we could do this, but the life is going to be not you know not great quality of life then yeah. i'd put her down but sometimes they say look here's just what's got to happen <laughs> it's going to cost you three thousand dollars or four thousand dollars and she'll be fine but do you want to spend that money yeah, yeah. you know let's say a tumor or something like that yeah right uh, now brian i think uh he's still awake he had a cat the other day he found a cat what, what's going on with that cat brian uh we found an uh, we found an uh we found an adaptee who was willing oh, to uh, okay. yeah. take care of it. I see. I so, knew a uh, The Facebook meme says, a while ago I was made aware of this Facebook meme, and I couldn't agree more with it. I love animals in general, or I love animals. It's people I can't stand. Yeah, well, I, I think that's a <laughs> Animals good are innocent. You know, that. you, know, you know what? I used to know a woman uh, and her husband. They lived up in, uh, up in Westchester. And she would see a cat on the street astray, and she would take him home. And then she had yeah. another one, took him home. Eventually, I'm not, t I'm not kidding you. She had something like twenty cats in the house. 
How many? The, uh, 20 cats. Oh they they Lord. moved out of the That's bedroom a, and slept That's on the couch even. because they, they wanted a place for the cats to sleep. That's not even healthy, though. I know. I know. It was horrible. It was terrible. But, you know, what are you going to say? Bad people? You know? What were you going to say, Mike? My neighbor had about that, 20 cats in their house. Yeah. But she, they made, like, little niches where the cats could sit on top of the fireplace. Yeah. They're like little statues lined up. And you don't know <laughs> if the damn thing is alive or not. <laughs> Oh, you know, you know, you know, you know what? I, 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 I finally found it, but the, this cat basically doesn't have a purr. It's very low. Really? It's very low. Uh, you know, and I'm used to a cat, like I used to have cats that purred up a storm, you know. And what a soothing feeling that is when the cat is purring. You know, it. it I it, heard, by the way, I heard that the purring is, uh, helps in healing. You know, it can, yeah, and, yeah. It can. Uh, if, sometimes cats purr if they're hurt, and it helps them heal. Yeah, and we've used that in the medical field. You know, dovetailing it with healthcare. Well, the uh, thing, the thing is, yeah, generating machines and whatnot well, for broken the, bones the, and shit. Well, the purr, I, I believe, is a soothing sound for kittens. So when a mom, mother, cat has their kittens, the purring is is a, is a soothing sound. But it's a very soothing sound to human beings too. It's awesome. awesome when it, when your cat's laying on top of you and starts purring. Yeah, it's awesome. It's awesome. Oh no, it, it's incredible, actually. Well, my dog sits on my chest and licks my face, and I, I don't want to push her away because I don't want to reject her. But I can't take all the licking. I don't and, like licking. Yeah, uh, it's you know. I used to have. It, I used to have. You remember Mouse? The, the, yeah. The, the I used one. to. Uh, it would be like time and uh, uh, time of day for me to wake up, mm -hmm. and I was my eyes would start kind of opening up slightly, and there she would be on my chest, looking right in my face. And when I tried to go to sleep, it, when I, tried, <laughs> I tried, he I'm just. Sorry, did. I really did. <laughs> they make out the criminals. Boy, <laughs> you really ha you really have a great fart there. Uh, anyway, so so uh, no, she would then to keep me from going back to sleep, lick my eyelids to keep me <laughs> up. You know, uh, I I I don't know. I just always love cats. I, I I you know I don't mind dogs, but there's something about cats. You know, I like uh, well, mouse. With, I like mouse. Mouse. Uh, would pee in the toilet, and yes. I thought that that was the best thing ever. You Mouse, know, I, and, I don't even and, think she and, had and, and people say, "How did you teach her that?" And we didn't mm -hmm. teach her that. She yeah. did it. She would watch my wife peeing, and then mm -hmm. one night I I caught her actually on the toilet seat squatting and peeing. Yeah. And then people would say to me, "Does she shit that way too?" I said, "You can't have everything," <laughs> you know. <laughs> And and uh, but no, she she taught that to herself. Yeah, but, I I had never seen that before. I understand it's more common than, uh, than a jazz musician by the name of Charlie Mingus wrote a book, How to Train Your Cat to Go on the Toilet, and it was a whole thing about you put the box on the toilet and you remove the box, and it takes weeks. And so. this no, in this case, the cat was just sit there and watch her go to the bathroom, Self and then I one night I I I wake up in the middle of the night and somebody's peeing in the toilet. And I get up and I, I look, my wife's there, Ronnie's there, and I go, what, what, what's this all about? And I go to the bathroom and there's nobody there. And I'm going, well, I'm just crazy. I'm hearing things. It's like part of a dream. I go back to sleep. Next night I'm sleeping, the same sound wakes me up. So I run in there and I go in there and there's, again, there's no cat, but there are two little wet little paw prints <laughs> on the toilet seat. And I went, no. And the next night it happened, and I got in there, and there she was, squatting, getting ready. And kind of saying, don't look at me. I can't pee while people stare at me. You know? And you see her reading the paper. <laughs> when did she go blind? She was, I, she went blind. God, she went blind while we were in New York. Uh, wow. And so, we, we didn't yeah. realize it for a while, because she could navigate the apartment with no problem at all, you know. Yeah. If we cut her whiskers off, she'd be fucked. But, you know. <laughs> I mean, uh, but, uh, 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 you know, I, I, I and, and so I always liked, I, I always preferred cats over dogs only because to begin with the thing that, that it's amazing 
and even in this case, the woman comes over, she brings the cat's cat box. And by the way, may I say, the technology of cat boxes have improved quite a bit since I was a kid. Because from cardboard to they've got it, well, it's like this these pebbles that mm -hmm. she shits on, and mm -hmm. then underneath is a pad you put in, so when they pee, it goes onto the pad, and then when every about twice a week you change the pad, it just slips right in under the box, mm. and um, uh, shall we? So we put the the box down there. This cat has never shed anywhere else in the house. She knows where she knew where the box was, and that's where she goes. And that's what I like about cats, because they're that way. They're very fastidious, and they won't go around messing up the rest of the house. You know, and even in a stranger's house like ours, I mean, if she shits somewhere else, I go, okay, she's panicked. It's a different place. And no, she, well, you're lucky. I, I go in and I measure people's houses for floor covering. Yeah. And let me tell you something. A lot of these cat and dog owners, uh, they're, they're living in shit. Uh, it's everywhere. Uh, there's stains everywhere. And, you know, these are normal people. And, they, and you look at the way they're living and you wonder, how do they live like this? And then if you ask them, is your, is your carpet stained? Oh, no. <laughs> yeah. And uh, so sometimes I'll go in with a black light. And say, well, let's turn off the lights, and I shine the black light, and you can see where all the urine stains are. Yeah. And some of these places are covered. And well, up well, the well, I have to say, when I had five, I think there were P the Trump P videos were made there. That's probably what it was. <laughs> <laughs> it's an emergency. Yeah. Mm -hmm. What were you saying, Alex? Now, part of the problem uh, uh, is that, like, when I had five cats, the place stunk because they never want to use the same place to take a shit. They yeah. want their own private place, and I had one cat who liked to do it in the bathtub. He would he would shit on one end of the bathtub and pee on the other end. And somebody said, "This is terrible. How do you put up with this?" I said, "We know where it is." Yeah, I've never you know seen going. shit in your bathtub in Sausalito. Uh, uh, so the cat must have been there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, uh, I think he was still shitting in the bathtub. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> but he would go over the drain for peeing. I thought that that was kind of smart too. <laughs> but then, you know, they all had to find their own place to poop because they don't like to poop in the same place. You know, if you put down one box, they're not all going to use the same box. They tell you that you should have one box for each cat and then an extra. Yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. I would, uh, but I, if we got a cat, I'd actually want to get two cats. Because I'm like you, uh, uh, Rob, I, I believe that cats need companionship, you know. Well, yeah, but you're always home. Yeah, yeah but when it, I, I'd like to be able to have somebody else to play with. You know, I'm sorry, but I, you know, I'm not good at a ball with a ball of yarn. Okay, <clears throat> and that's and that's the reason why it's tough to get a kitten, because kittens make you run around like crazy because they have a boatload of energy. And you know what? I raised. My my big my twelve year old is laying on the end of the bed over there. When she was a kitten twelve years ago, I guess I just didn't remember. And also, she's a girl, but the boy is just a little over a year old now, and he is just a terror. He has the energy, a ball of energy, and you're constantly, you know, having to entertain him, or he can get destructive. Mm -hmm. so, I don't know how old this kid and this cat is, but I think she's pretty young. I think she's a couple of years old. That's, that's mature enough to be like right now. Yeah. Jack is slow. He's, well, all I got to tell is you like is that months, she sleeps, and he's starting to settle down. She sleeps all day, and then this time of night, uh, when it's time for me to go to sleep, she decided that the hallway, which is rather long, mm -hmm. is the cat's version of the Indiana uh, Indianapolis Five Hundred. <laughs> she and and she you know she wants she's going hey i'm awake now i don't want anybody else to sleep then she starts yowling you know <laughs> yeah. yes mike that's my that's my cats two o'clock in the morning between two and three two and four they're yeah. playing in the living room right up and down those are yours yep. those yep. are yours Run, 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 run. I'm going to go over yeah. here, and I'm going to open the door I, I, I and see if I can get her to come in. That's crazy. Go ahead. Yeah, I want to see it. Open the door and see if I can get her to come in. We know those funny with cats, and dogs, too. They know when you're not feeling good. They'll stay right with you. Do you see her walking in at all? 
I don't know. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Right. Hey, hey, how you doing? Come on, come in in here. Meet meet people, okay? Uh, I don't. Uh, let me see here if I can take my camera and uh, do something with it. Hold on a second. Are male cats more easygoing or more playful than uh, they Maybe. can Hold be on. sociable I, with other animals than female cats? Hold on a I second. I find that they're, they're to... more laid back. and uh, Like, I know mine, my male cat is very much a, a all boy. He's he's like a little, you know, rough and tumble, and, but yet he's so self-confident and just – like so different from the girl cat. I mean, Did it's just amazing. They you could definitely tell the sexes, and both of them have been fixed from when they were less than three months old. So see. it's just a. It's cool. Here. If people can. Uh, I, mean, I, I see the picture now of uh, the there cat in front go. of the window, there, looking out at the building. Yeah. Well, there's the cat lying down on her side here. She just came in. Yeah. So people can. Uh, uh, can uh, which see. camera is it on? Huh? No, I've got it. I, I've got it literally playing on the on the. Oh, video. there. Okay. See, I've got the my whole camera on there. Yeah. That's uh, that's Ber that's Berta, and uh, <laughs> she is uh, she has taken over the household very very nicely. Thank you. And uh, uh, let me let me just close the door here so the air conditioning stays in here. Uh, hey, hey Berta, how you doing, kiddo? You all right? Okay. Just enjoy yourself. Just don't get up on the on the table and put take me off the air, okay? <laughs> get in the close. Uh, See what? Oh, that's what, what these keys are. Stay where you Something are. to play with. Yeah, I used to do when my when my twelve year old was a kitten. She used to jump up on my desk and look at my computer screen, and all See? I would do is Wait take the mouse and my move earphones. it around the screen real fast, what? and she'd. Go, trying to scratch the the mouse pointer <laughs> well she no she has a laser little laser thing her mother brought and oh, I, I love i've it. taken i made the, her run back My and dog forth too. Uh, i have a laser oh, measure here we go she's she's about to do it she's getting up on the she's uh well she's over she's over the other where the other screen is i don't know if yeah. it's picking her up at all let me see here no. wait a minute uh no She's going. She's going behind everything. Come over here. Hey, hey uh, it's Kitty. Berta. Berta. She doesn't. She doesn't react to that name. But now she's 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 gonna go over to the radiator, and uh, she's having her. She's having a little time. Come here, it was interesting Berta. That the Berta cat was outside the door. Come here. Come here. <laughs> Come here, Berta. Come here. Come here. Oh, See, there. Uh, uh, oh, oh, Emmett, uh, she's got, you're going to take us off the air, Berta. There you go. <laughs> oh, oh yes. a beautiful huh? cat. I, I don't, I don't know how old she is, to tell you the damn truth. But uh, uh, there's a site on uh, for Pennsylvania, Keystone Exotics. You can, as far as pets are concerned, you can yeah. get, uh, get, you can get like a pet raccoon and uh, hmm. fox, uh, possum even. Yeah, uh, I'm sure they'd love that. Yeah, yeah. But anyway, so she's a, she's a, she's a sweetheart, and she has uh, she has won over Marjorie's heart. She just thinks the world of her. She can hardly wait to get home every day to see the cat, you know. And uh, I said, uh, you know. I, I wonder if your friends are that attached to the cat. Uh, uh, oh yes, they are. Oh, she oh. absolutely loves it. Oh, there, there's, there's, there's Rob's. That's my yeah. twelve-year-old. That? That's a twelve-year-old. She's a twelve-year-old. She's the girl. She's, she's a rag doll, and uh, they're both rags. Huh? They're both rags. Yeah. I was just afraid that it, it, the cat was starting to get on the keyboards, and you know, uh, you can very easily switch the show by just you know hitting the keyboard. You know. <laughs> I don't have two minutes left anyway. Uh, yeah, I only have about two minutes left. Are you okay, Berta? Okay, she's just lying on her side down here now. Like, uh, she's being very good. She's it's a treat for her because this room is uh, is a horrible room uh, because she can't ever get in it. You know, she likes to know because the door is always closed because the air conditioning is on in here to keep the equipment cool. And she always wants she wants every room accessible to her. You know, 
and doesn't want the argument. By the way, I want to thank uh, Phil. Last night we spent about an hour and a half trying to make something work, and we couldn't make it work. But thank you, Phil. I really appreciated that. You're welcome. Hey, another minute, I can restart my computer, and, and my installation was successful. It, it was successful? <laughs> yeah, it says, it says it was successful. Now it's, that's, it's, what the, that's what they say. Yeah. Anyway, uh, it's, it's, I don't know what party, yeah. the Democrats or the Republicans. Uh, yeah, uh, thank uh, you, Phil. Just the color monkey. Thank you, Rob. And what's your cat's yeah. name again? Maxie. Maxie. Yep. And of course, uh, Anthony Magno. What's your dog's name? Coco, and I might be adopting another one. Okay. And Maybe Mike, do you have an animal? What's that? Mike, do you have an animal? Yeah, I got two. Uh, three. I got uh, Bruno, my beagle. Uh huh. And Garfield and Junior. Okay. And I think I deserve crash labor. I think it's Junior again. Okay. Anyway, uh, <laughs> Jeff, do you have any pets at this point in your life? And how about you, uh, Brian? Uh, it's two Yorkies, two York Two York Terriers. Okay. Well, anyway, uh, thanks everybody. Not, not I really, I really, awesome. I really appreciate it. And thanks to all mm-hmm. our listeners as well. Mm-hmm. And uh, we'll it's see you again wonderful. tomorrow night. Wave goodbye, everybody. There you yeah. go. There they go. That's it. That's about what happens uh, when we do a, a citizens panel. Uh, do you, did you notice? It was a very simple process. And uh, we're very happy uh, that you could join us as well. Hold on a second. I got to just turn this all off here. And. Uh, uh, tell you that uh, I uh, will be back again tomorrow night. Uh, Ak and Amy are next with the uh, 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 the intersection, and then uh, at uh, one o'clock this morning, uh, it's going to be connections. I'm Alex Bennett. That's it for tonight. See you tomorrow night, same time, same station in life. In the meantime, you see her. Tell her I love her. Okay.